My name is Walter L. Fluker, Martin Luther King Jr. Professor at Boston University. During his last year, Martin Luther King Jr. asked the difficult but necessary question, where do we go from here? His question was a signal to African Americans and other marginalized groups that their liberative claims and practices would need to extend beyond the restricted boundaries of U.S. geopolitical and capitalist interest. His question was also an interrogation of the promised land of freedom and opportunity and the precarity of ghostly non-democratic performances in neoliberal political and economic constructions of race, religion, and culture a culture of violence and death which still persists in our contemporary context. I refer here to the ways in which the specter of post-racialism was but a foil for the ways in which the democratic ideal of the radical egalitarian hypothesis has and continues to masquerade as an ideal of a non-racial society where uh, everybody is the same. While the economic, political, and social situations of the poor of all colors and creeds progressively deteriorate. At stake in this conversation about the world house is the meaning of democratic space and its compatibility with the notion of global citizenship. In this moment of American history, it appears that the idea of democratic space is returning to a time we thought we had bypassed with the election of President Barack Obama. As we continue to hear, however, about the dismantling of health care, building walls to keep others out, strengthening our criminal justice system, uh, saber-rattling with North Korea, Iran, and Russia, and with the visceral emotions unloosed after the tragic display of domestic terrorism in Charlottesville, we're witnessing a dangerous period in our history that I now call American post-racialism, -post a return to the language of America first and let's make America great again. King's call for a world house, however, reminds us that there is indeed plenty good room in our nation for a diverse and inclusive society or for what the late historian John Hope Franklin called the land of room enough. But first we must create space for others. In our precarious experiment in democracy, we must create space for the other. A fundamental consideration of this space is respect for human dignity, but also the responsibility, not just the right, but the responsibility to dissent. I agree that democracy is first and foremost a proposition. That is, it's a plan. It is conditional. Therefore, if we want America, as King said, to become a great nation, not to become great again, to, but to become a great nation, we must choose to create democratic space. For indeed, there is room enough.